this is the theme of my life. This one scripture. Set your affections on things above and not on the earth. You know, set your affections on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. And just lift them off the earth. And then you'll be surprised how fast worry will leave you. Depression has no place. Anxiety, well, it'll try to come back. <laughs> but no, your affections are not locked into anxiety, fear, and depression. All these things that try to... Try to, it's, it's the dust, it's the serpent dust that the enemy feeds upon that it, where we, he can grow bigger in our lives than the appearance, in appearance only, than God. It's like God's foot. You know, how big is Satan? Like, you know, well, just look at the bottom of God's foot. <laughs> you know, we're not even talking about an ankle yet, you know, not even the knee, <laughs> just the bottom of the foot. <laughs> That's how powerful the devil is. It's as powerful as the bottom of the skin on the foot of Jesus. <laughs> that means to me that the least in the body has authority to trample on him all of his works, all of his plans, all of his words. That's how powerful the devil is. He's <laughs> the weakest Christian could destroy him <laughs> just by being in the body of Christ and believing Christ. It's as simple as that. Oh. You know, we have no need that any man teaches us. The Holy Ghost will teach us. Just pick up the Word of God, the Bible, and read it and believe it. It takes a theologian, a carnal one, to confuse a believing believer. You know, I've always, when I just picked up my Bible, I just, I just believed it. I mean, I, I don't know if I struggle. I struggle with some of the stuff in there, like, uh, you know, why, God, how come you're meeting with, you know, Ezekiel and blowing him up in the air like that? What about me? You know? I'm in a better covenant. How come you're walking with Enoch and I'm, si I'm sitting here in my room with my guitar? Ah, you know, let's go to the store. You know, and God did. He, you saw the hunger. How do you fuel your walk with God? It's fueled by hunger. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If there's no hunger. There's no filling, because you're already full. You'll be already full of yourself, or full of the world, or full of anything that you know. You got hung. You, we all hunger for something. Some of it's it's video games. Some of us we hunger for Netflix. <laughs> Some of us we hunger for love in all the wrong places. But blessed are those blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. <clears throat> you might say, "Well, I've already been made righteous. I'm a born again believer. You just need to have more faith, brother." <laughs> yeah, you're right. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I need to hear him more. You're absolutely right. I need more faith. Faith works by love. Oh, I need more of his love, man. I need more of his love, more of his voice. I need more faith, God. <laughs> I want more, so much faith that I could just explode. My flesh would go flying in a million pieces. And in everyone that it hits, it gets them baptized in the Holy Ghost. Where that, because even my flesh. <laughs> my heart and flesh cry out for the living God. It's written in the Old Testament. It's like in the New Testament, it's like we we found God. Jesus Christ. The living the Father. You know, the Holy Ghost lives in us and he reveals Jesus to us. And Jesus reveals the Father to us. It's like, yeah, so you're right. I do need more faith. I do need more love, but listen to this. It's like, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. You've already been made righteous, dude. It's like, like you're not just going after the righteousness, but although he is our righteousness and we're pursuing him, blessed are those who hunger and thirst, but even after righteousness, those are the ones who get filled. The ones who are content and 
just like I've been made righteous and uh, I'm fine. I just you gotta have more faith, but yeah, you're right. I need more faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. True faith will have the substance of God in your life. True faith will have the substance and the evidence of the things that are not seen coming through your life. For instance, Peter's shadow, healing the sick. There was the substance and there was evidence. Now is there a substance and evidence of, in your life that you have this true faith that you speak of? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know? Faith is the substance of the thing that you're hoping for. It will truly manifest it. So many people want to walk with God like Enoch walked. Well, actually, well, I don't know if so many people. I know I did. That was that was the the very first thing that just gripped me as a new believer. I like wow. And Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him. Wait a minute, wait a second. Enoch walked with God. And was not? That's one of the keys right there in that verse. He was not. <laughs> you know, when you someone who's walking with God, it will not be about them anymore. It's all about God who they're walking with. Enoch walked with God and was not. <laughs> For God took him. Where did God take him? <laughs> to that hangout where they would meet all the time. In that love realm. God took him into his heart into his innermost being. I heard about this testimony. I talk about it a lot because I love it, man. It just I can feel God coming through the screen and made me bawl my eyes out. That he saw Enoch's last step, Kevin Zadai. Kevin Zadai, I don't even know how to say his name. But he's he was standing with an angel and he was looking at this man in another time in another realm on the earth. And he saw he, he was Enoch, okay? <laughs> no surprises. And he was walking and then all of a sudden the man just disappeared Poof. and this ring of the glory it's like you know when a nuclear bomb goes Poof. it was like that but it was the ring of the glory it went, that he walked in and it just went toward him and the like outwards throughout the world and it hit him kevin and the angel who was standing there and then they buckled their knees from the residue of the glory that Enoch walked in. You say you're walking with God. There will be a residue of the glory that you walk in. Because God is the glory. There will be a residue of the presence of God when you speak. Not even when you speak. There was a lady. I was in a dollar store. And this lady walked right by me. And when she walked by me, God walked by me. It was like, the presence of God just went right by me. I'm like, ooh, I, I gotta follow, I gotta stalk this lady, you know, walk around, this old lady in the store. I don't know if she came out of a prayer meeting or what happened, but she was so filled with God. I didn't need to ask her if she was a Christian. She was so, she was more full of Christ than me. So I knew that she was a Christ-like one. Why? It wasn't with anything she said. It was who she was walking with. She was a, she was like Enoch. She walked with God, literally through the dollar store. <laughs> yeah. And we have the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead living in us. The believing believers, though, not the unbelieving believers. <laughs> because in John, it says that to as many as believe to them, he gave the power to become sons of God. To as many as believe. Doesn't say if you have to say a sinner's prayer and live like a devil the rest of the week. If you truly believe, then you'll truly receive <laughs> his divine nature that you can walk in. You know, test yourselves whether you're in the faith. Do you not know that Christ is in you? Of course. Unless you fail the test, <laughs> you'll be looking for him in outer space or on YouTube. <laughs> No oh, man, he's living within his believing believers. One time I went to a vision, it was my feet, Jesus' feet, my feet, Jesus' feet, my feet, Jesus' feet. And I realized, I thought it was my feet. And I realized, oh, I thought it was Jesus' feet. And I came to the conclusion, yeah, he, li he literally lives in me. <laughs> in the Song of Solomon, verse uh, chapter 5, 
Uh, I had the Passion Translation. It was the best I've ever, I bawled my eyes out. It's like, Here I am within you, my beloved, my, my bride or whatever. Oh, he's in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So you never have to go another day living in the glory, in the gory, because <laughs> you can go from glory to glory by ever beholding him. And by beholding him, you see him through a pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, right? A pure heart is, you got all the idols out. Netflix can still be on the agenda. It's just like, it's not, it's not as valuable as just looking at Jesus. Uh, you know, what? Playing video games can still be on the agenda. It's just not as fun as being blasted in the Holy Ghost looking at Jesus. <laughs> it's just, there's no comparison. <laughs> it's like, uh, <sighs> audiobooks are great, but when His Word speaking to you, there's nothing as powerful as that because His words are spirit and life, and that spirit and life is what every single human being was designed to absorb and walk in. We were designed to walk with God closer than Enoch. You know, closer than the old lady in, in, in the dollar store. It's like literally like once whoever's been baptized into the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. It is written. So it's like we wake up in the middle of the night. Oh, wow. There you are, Holy Spirit. You go to bed, you're laying down, you're in the presence of God. You wake up, you're in the presence of God. You go do your daily stuff, you're in the presence of God. You wash the dishes in the presence of God. And it's like, then the enemy comes in, but like a flood, the, the Lord raises up a standard against him. What is that standard? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is the standard. Not your pastor, not your ideas, not your theology even. Christ is the standard against the devil. Just the, the bottom of his foot is as high as the devil can go in the body of Christ. So just mm, give him one of those. <laughs> Kick him while he's down. <laughs> it's like a, like a little chihuahua just <laughs> trying to distract you from worshiping Jesus. Just give him one of those. <laughs> He'll whimper away with his tail between his legs. And come back at a, another opportune time, perhaps, you know. <laughs> we have authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, but that authority is in Christ. <laughs> he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of his canopy of his wings, you know, this dome of glory. The enemy cannot enter into that glory. <sighs> he can try and shoot some arrows. Accusations, bitterness, you know, well... But you're in the glory, so LOL, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what the dead have to say. I'm with the living. I'll, I care what the living have to say because those words are spirit and life. And uh, yeah, so anyways, that's my video. Just a quick little video. I want to say hi. Jesus loves you. Goodbye. <laughs>